instantly saw mm -hmm. the left one was fake. The card's fake too, yeah. It's a really, really good fake. If somebody was wearing this 10 feet away, I don't think anybody would be able to tell. Hello. Is this shooting set? Wow. Give me a little bit of time to figure this out. Thank you. Bye. This is big. Guys, before we continue, please comment, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell button to help us grow, and let's get back to the video. All right, so before I talk to my partners about this, I wanted to get your take. We're literally going to freeze up potentially $2 million mm -hmm. until September in order to may sell a watch to somebody who is extremely visible, extremely famous, a celebrity, and on top of that, a huge businessman who could potentially become an investor here. Because, because if I get in front of him, I'm going to pitch that. If I have 15 minutes in a room with him, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Listen, I like Hail Marys. That's what it's all this is. This is a, this is a fucking Hail Mary. This is like no seconds left on the clock, jump ball. My focus is getting him in a room and making him pot potentially not only an investor, but maybe even a client. The problem is, we know the type of individual he is just from the public eye. Tough cookie to crack. All right, let me go talk to Alice. Ooh, I have a proposition for you. So, over the weekend, I called producer Michael. I said, well, I have this special Jorn set. He's a diehard Jorn collector. It's like, nobody else in the world has this set. Went back and forth, back and forth. How much is it? I said, it's $2 million. He said, He's interested, he just needs to check, make sure, because he's got a really good uh, relationship with Jorn, and he wants to make sure it doesn't mess anything up. He knows about the fact that we have a set in our possession. No, no, Jorn does. After about 15, 20 minutes of conversation of, of Michael and him, they were going back and forth. He's like, I'm interested, but I have a stipulation. I like, What's the stipulation? He's like, I want to, I, he's like, I also want to make a video, and, uh, but I want to do it at the Jorn Boutique in LA. Do you think they would might have a problem with that? No, they the won't. Jordan people? No, they wouldn't. Okay. They wouldn't have a problem. Okay. Long story short, it's like I want to do it as Jordan boutique. I'm like, okay, great. One problem. He wants to do it in September. <laughs> if he puts it on labor till September, it's one thing. But if he's not committing and we have to keep it till September, I, I don't know. From a business perspective, if it was an existing client and like, I knew this was going to be sold, et cetera, et cetera, it's one thing. For a new client, from a business perspective, financially, it makes no sense. At the end of the day, if the guy wasn't interested, he wouldn't ask you to hold it for two months and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it, it doesn't mean anything for it us. Doesn't, it doesn't you know, mean anything. It's what a, it, lot of, what a lot, it also, a lot what, of smoke and mirrors, right? But what it does mean for us is that if I have a chance to have 15 minutes in a room with this guy, in terms of what we're trying to do in terms of expansion, in terms of growing the business, in terms of investment and stuff like that, I mean, he'd probably be my Adrian said, I'll say the same thing, top five guys to go to if I wanted to do this. So for us, it's, uh, it's a humongous opportunity. But what that means is that we freeze up $2 million until the beginning of September, which is two months. I am not a huge believer of this deal, but the only thing is it might give us like an additional needed uh, exposure. In a business environment, most will tie value to a dollar amount. But in some cases, Value doesn't necessarily tie to a dollar amount. So watch and see what happens. Adrian thinks it's worth a shot. I think it's worth a shot, but it's not a decision I can make on my, by myself. Guys, you know, we've been in worse predicaments. I guess it's yeah, worth it. We had people owe us $6 million for after, a year. After you explained what the potential is, I guess. Yeah, I'm being as, I guess clear, I'm should, being as clear as possible. I, I guess we should go for it. I think even if he doesn't buy it, well, you always have to keep an open mind that he may not buy it. Exactly. So, that's where we are. So, sounds like you're on board. Yeah. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Listen. It's worth taking a shot. So, yeah. I'm going to tell Michael just that then. All right, thank you. Good luck, people. You guys have seen me preach knowledge over and over and over again. And I practice what I preach. I decided to come up with a creative way that's going to allow my sales staff to increase their knowledge on certain products, all while creating content for the content team and marketing. I wasn't here last week, so what happened? I literally told them, go downstairs, grab a bunch of independents. Mm -hmm. I said, every one of you has to create a one minute reel. Talks about the watch, the company, the complications, mm -hmm. blah, 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 the history. On a scale of one to 10, how well do you think these kids are gonna do? I think they're gonna do well. 
It's on. Kids, you ready? This should be good. One of the things that I always preach here is knowledge, right? Part of that is explanation of the history, the company, the complications, anything that may be unique about a set watch, which is why I decided to not just preach, but also test, right? And part of your test was I gave you a week to create a one minute review of a random watch. And I decided to go with independence first because I feel like it's a bit harder and there could be a lot more to talk about. Let's say any of these versus, let's say a Rolex and Mariner. So I'm gonna look at your reels with Anna. All right, so up first we got Big Dick Nick uh, with, uh, which watch did you that pick? That is the nickname? That's his new nickname. It's too bad we don't have an HR department in Luxury Bazaar. <laughs> Big Dick Nick. Good to know. Hi, how's it going? You're probably wondering what I have in my wrist. Why don't you come over and we'll talk about it. So this is the Hochelins HL07. Hochelins was founded in 2004, and this movement was actually made in 2005. The movement being named HL was where this collection actually gets its name from. So this is the HL07 in-house caliber movement with a manual winding mechanical caliber. Now, you may be noticing that it is jumping hours and retrograde minutes, which has a connect and rod system to it, which the skeletonized dial really allows you to get a complete view of. This watch comes in at 43 millimeters by 35 millimeters. It actually is the same aspect ratio of a 16 by nine TV, which is perfect for all those collecting TV dial watches. This specific model is actually a limited edition and limited to 88 pieces. This HL07 is available now at Luxury Bazaar. Feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram at nickoftime.lb. Thoughts? Anna? I think it was a good job. I'm impressed, actually. All right, so let's talk about this hot lens, right? So it's a, it's a retrograde, right? right? So it's not a jump hour, per se, but it's a retrograde, right? And it shows you the system as how the retrograde works, how the hours jump, right? What you did was a nice sales pitch. Like, I give this a solid B-. minus. Okay. It was a sales pitch. You gave basic information. You never mentioned the founder's name. If you're going to mention that part of the movement, what makes that watch special. Great, I love the TV touch, right? That was awesome. Retail price, somewhere in there, there should have been a retail price. So, and selling price would help as well. And if you're going to make it like a pitch video, a selling price would help as well. But overall, I give it a solid B minus. Let's see what Machine Gun Chris came up with. Today we have the De Bethune, I think that's how you say it, DV26. This is limited edition one of 16 only in the room. It does have the variable geometry floating lugs, which allows the case to move upwards and it hugs the wrist very well. This, as you see, has a patented spherical moon phase, which is one of a kind. And again, this is a three dimensional perpetual moon calendar and it is encased in rose gold. Here you can see the case back movement. And I will show you what it looks like on my wrist. Size reference, 16.5 circumference wrist, as Tim Mossa would say. But as you can see, it hugs the wrist really well. And that is the Deep Bethune DB26. It can be yours for 124995 If interested, hit us down, down below. Again, another sales pitch. I think you guys missed the memo in regards to these not being sales pitches, but being informative videos instead. All right, you talked about a patent moon phase. What makes this moon phase more special than others? The, the main thing you forgot to mention that this is a perpetual calendar. It's just a big complication, right? Things like, oh, I don't know how to pronounce things. No, you go online and, and Google has a nifty little option where you hit play and it tells you how to pronounce it, right? So you pronounce, you pronounce it right. Another thing that I felt that you got, would have been cool to include with this stuff is the packaging. Probably a solid C plus on this one because again, I did not get enough information. Luckily, we happen to have a badass video team here. So the mechanics of the shots can obviously be improved. You need to speak a little bit more clearly. And if you f up and go, uh, then re-record. You gotta try to punch in as much information into this and not make it a sales pitch. So both of you made this a sales pitch. That's not what we're looking for. Who's next? Let's see what Alex had to say. Yo. What's up, man? <laughs> what would you say is your favorite watch? Here at Luxury Bazaar? Yeah. Let me show you. <laughs> Why do I feel like uh, he should be wearing an 80s outfit? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, we were about to start one of those sweat workouts with what's his name? Uh, Richard, what was the guy's with name that, with the curly that, hair? That Swatch watch that's yeah. uh, in my office. <laughs> 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 
When Ian asked what my favorite watch was, I could only think of one. Well, maybe five. Here we have the almighty FP Journe 38 millimeter celebration set. This set was the final farewell to the beloved 38 millimeter case size in Journe's lineup. First up, we have the Octa Automatique. Journe's first automatic wristwatch created in 2001. The dial features a 120 hour power reserve. However, the true power reserve for this watch is around seven days. Now we have the Chronomet Souverain, a very simple, elegant manual wine dress watch launched in 2005. The movement features two barrels mounted parallel, which helps provide more consistent power thus increasing the accuracy of this watch. Here I'm holding up the Resonance. This is the first wristwatch to feature the Resonance movement. The Resonance movement is comprised of two independent escapements so that influence each other to average out the timing errors. So this is easily the most coveted piece in the collection. This is the Tourbillon Souverain, featuring the original movement that the brand launched in 1999 and was later discontinued in 2003. This is the only example of this movement in rose gold. Lastly, we have the Octa Calendraria. Introduced in 2005, this was an automatic annual calendar displayed in retrograde format with a power reserve of 120 hours. A very unique design that is very distinctly drawn. And that is my favorite watch today here at Luxury Bazaar's Inventory. DM, text, mail, send a pigeon, PM for pricing. Peace. Creativity A+, thank you video team. This just goes to show that outside of the information that you put forth, we have an entire content department behind you guys to help you make it look that cool. Now, had it been a single watch, I would say punch in the information about, what's, what's uh, F.B. Jordan stand for? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Francois Paul. Francois Paul. Yeah, Jordan. Because you had to go through five watches, right? It made your life a lot difficult to get into more details. But if you were talking about a singular watch or even talking about the set, you got to give me basic information about the guy when the company was open. A couple of more key facts about the watch, for example, the biggest factor of the Turbion was, yes, it's the only Turbion out there with that movement, but it's also what's so special about it is they use the original movement from 2003 in the Souverain. A lot of other little key things you could have thrown in there. I like the pace of this. It's a great Instagram reel, but for informative purposes to a client, there's a lot more information behind every single one of those watches, right? So I'm going to give this one an A minus. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Ian for the reel. Uh, you're welcome. All right, so we we'll saved the best for last. One minute review with Sabina. Look at that. That's, that's so professional. Hey guys, it's Sabina, and I wanted to talk about a very special watch. It is the FP Journ Elegant and it does some really cool things for a quartz movement watch. FP Journe realized that he needed to make a quartz watch because all of the other brands were also doing it. It was very popular for women. Therefore, he wanted to do something that was better than any other brand. He didn't care that it cost a lot. He wanted it to be expensive and dressy and different. So he decided to change up the regular movement of quartz and add electric mechanical features to this. Even though this piece is quartz, it is also mechanical. When you put down the watch, it stops after 30 minutes. FP Journe wanted to create a quartz watch that was different. Thanks, so. That's a cup of I think it repeated itself. It to be perfect and you wanted to do better than the other brands. This watch actually goes to sleep after you put it down for 30 minutes or however long. You can leave it down for a month, a year, or five years, and as soon as you pick it back up, it will correct itself on the dial itself. FP Jorn does claim that they haven't had a battery change since 2014, and this battery can last up to eight to ten years with normal use. It can also last 18 years, you know, if you don't use the watch. But I think it's incredible what he did, especially being that even though this is a quartz movement, there's absolutely almost no maintenance. You don't need to wind this every month or so. You really changed the game with this. A plus on the nails. I'm not worried about the technical thing that you guys put the same clip in twice. That's that's That wasn't the point of this video. Great information. Again, missing uh, basic stuff, right? Who is Mr. Jorn when the company was open? Size of the watch, retail price of the watch, right? Real basic information that's missing. Uh, overall, I give it a B plus. Overall, I don't think the reel turned out the way that I wanted it to. Um, I kind of rushed it and I wasn't finished on time, so it turned out to be complete shit. 
The key point of this exercise was the following. It's not about creating a beautiful video. It's about picking up the phone and having the confidence to talk to a client about a watch. What I urge is that you do this collectively as a team now because you may have a piece of information someone doesn't have. And as you are doing a reel about a particular watch, the people around you are learning just the same. All right? Thank you. Overall, I think the team got a solid B minus. And I'm gonna have them do this consistently, upwards of three times a week. This is not a used car lot or a cold call sales environment. Knowledge is key. It's like the most complicated RF, right? Or one of the most complicated RF. One of, yeah, you could definitely say one of. I mean, besides, you know, uh, other than a turbion or one that, you know, shoots you to the moon. Uh, right. It's, def it's right. definitely up there, you know? <laughs> the, premium, the premium for the 1103 is currently higher than the 6501. You're talking over 2x premium for the 1103 and basically 50% premium for the 60 for the 6501. Look, you walk out the store with this watch if you're lucky enough to get it, you're paying 350, right? What do they make you take on the other end? Think about how much money you have to spend. And more, million dollars. More, million, more than a million dollars. Yeah. Essentially what you're buying is less of a premium than 1103, significantly less production, and probably a retail price hike coming up soon. They're probably gonna raise retails, yeah. I kinda have to be careful of where I place it, right? I called you because I trust you. Like, dude, I can't get that from you. And then for a month, I'm trying to get a band that fits me. It's madness, dude. Like, it can't be that. Like, we gotta, I know it's like- Well, I got news for you, sir. It is on an 1103L. Oh, it's on a large yeah. track already? Yep. The green one? The green one. Ah. Beautiful. Sometimes it's harder to, to get to get the straps for these things than um it is than actual watch. I know it's a big and this green one is killer because it matches the crown and it matches some of the stuff in the sub dial, which is it's just sick. I'm like, dude, there's three RMs that I would like if I could choose three RMs, the 6501 NTPT would be one of them. It is just it's just mind boggling sick. Sick. Yeah, it really is. Dude. You know, another Actually, one, another one would be an RM9, which is just like a you know neo vintage type collector stuff, super super rare. It's a two million dollar watch, and then something else would be like one of Rafa's uh, you know turbs. Those three pieces, right? And then I got this one, and I'm like, wow, this is just this is just killer. It's it's the details in it. it it's a, dude, it's a race car on the wrist. Like if you look at it, everything about the watch just screams just. Formula One screams hypercar. I mean, it's, 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 it's bananas. This one specifically with the black, it's it's a, it's a game changer. Game changer. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I mean, I kind of like, I kind of like see that kind of like I'm I'm like, I, I know I'm just just thinking I'm like, am I just kind of getting caught up because it's like something new or whatever? But it is like, it definitely has like a whole a different vibe with the fucking, you know the four buttons and like the whole thing. It's a different machine, bro. It's a split, it's a split second. It's just a monster. Like it's, it's, it's the quintessential Richard Mille. Like this is, this is what they make. This is the watch. All right. Yeah, dude, yeah, no, let's, let's do it. Okay. All right. Uh, like usual, I'll, I'll get you through. I'll, I'll, I'll put together like a, a good chunk for you. I'll, you know, wire you something tomorrow. One of my favorite things about this business is obviously the products that we deal with as well as the people that we deal with. And here was actually the first time that we had a 6501 in NTPT Carbon. All black with that green strap was absolutely killer. And it's great when something comes in that I haven't seen before that just like completely blows my mind. So I was super excited to hook a friend up, hook a very good client up with, with this watch, living vicariously through him, of course. Oh man. <laughs> I know. Listen, we're taking a consignment. We gotta try to get him out as close as possible. Obviously, he's gonna lose on it, but what, what is that, Mr. One, one thirty-five. It cost yeah, one thirty-five. I say you leave it with us for one ten on consignment. We'll try to net you one ten. Go from there. Otherwise, there's nothing we can really do. I mean, on consignment, it's, like it's it, it's it, it trades under retail. Is it fair to set it at one twenty and then talk if anything if we get close? Well, what's the point? You might as well set it at a rate that we can sell it for them. 120, I can't sell that watch. 2021 especially. I mean, it all depends on like, how much you're gonna pay me for these. It's, it's all the package, I bought them as a package, so I need to know. Leave them on consignment 40 and 40, and one time. What are you into all these for? So it's 40 and he's 40. He's making money on this, this he's gonna break even. No, I can't, I, I need a bit more. I mean, I, I just don't know what you're into all this stuff for. I don't really I'm in it for 205. 
Right. Everything is 205. Okay, so look. I'm fine breaking even, but I just don't want Like, I'm not in a super rush. Yeah, he doesn't care. Like he, he can sit and we can. Like I'm not. I don't want to sit. My only, sit my only issue, my only issue is, is that this may go down further. No, no, this can go down further. This, this, yes. This is this is gonna be where it's at. This this oyster flex. The, uh, Paul Newman dial went from fifty five, and now now they're available new for forty. It's a twenty eight thousand dollar watch. No, I know. That's why I'm not. I'm not like. So I just thought. I what's the reason like, on this? I'm fine. I'm fine with the price. I'm fine with the price for this one, no problem. So what are you into this one for then? Forty one. The retail was like forty one with taxes. Right. Yeah, taxes. That's that, that's what I would yeah. say. So you have twenty eight plus forty one plus one thirty five comes out to two oh four. Yeah, that's what I'm in for. So I'm just trying to, you know. The problem is I have to set a number per watch. You okay. see what I mean? Our so consignment rate isn't we sell something and, and it's like seven percent you get, right? We don't do it. We set a rate and anything we sell for above or below is what we keep. So this is a perfect example of the market environment we're in right now, where something that I want to buy versus something I want to consign, the margin is so large, which sometimes makes it difficult to come to an agreement. We just, I, I never really charge anything. I just told you, hey, here's an offer. I'm going to take a couple of grand profit. I, mean, I, would, I, would, I would trade him for some stuff, but there's just the, we don't have that type of room on that watch for me to buy it. We're not buying it. We're taking everything. I'm saying in, in general. Right. So let's talk about consignment. I told you guys numerous times, we're not really a consignment shop. We reserve consignment as a tool for our clients. I know that sounds a little bit weird. Why, Roman, why wouldn't you take on a bunch of free inventory to sell and make money on? Well, there's a reason for that. It's because that's not what we thrive to do. We're in the business of buying and selling watches. However, there comes a time where a client, a good client, or any client for that matter, decides, you know what, I'd like to get a little bit more out of my watch, or I kind of paid a lot and I don't really want to take a big haircut. What can we do in order for me not to feel the pain as much well i could i was thinking like if not we can like if i would be a lot less like i don't know what would the buy price on these 40 and 40 so the old 2021 i mean listen i i, I see where these are I, i'd pay you cash 35 and then for the white gold i I, don't know, I wouldn't even want to pay you over 41. what do you think max we can net but do it per watch so that he understands the 2021 i think at the very very top 115 120 okay, so it's at the very top and with this one, maybe 40, and this one, maybe 45. That's, that's just where it is. I don't like to under deliver. This is just what I, I know I can sell it. That's 205. What? That's 205, but that's okay. most that's most we can sell it for, you think? Yeah, like at the very, very top. And we have to do it fast. If this is not, take your time, because this stuff is coming down. If we can try to retail this for 130, 135. I'm telling you, I don't think we can. When they came out of the gate, they were hot for a no, not, no, not, not, not so long. No, they weren't that hot. I didn't expect to like make money on it. I embrace the never. But listen, sometimes, you, unfortunately, you, <laughs> you want to show a report of how much money we lost. I mean, sometimes you. you yeah, look, last you month just, I took a few L's. We sold, we sold a platinum Daytona baguette. We lost $48,000. Yeah. Yeah, but it's different when you lose on market pricing than when you lose on retail. I just don't want to. I just want to be around there, like you know, just not twenty grand on this. So we can leave them at two hundred five, and, and worst case scenario, I can always make them. I can always tell them, look, I have an offer for this, and we'll take three grand profit or whatever it is. Oh, is that? I mean, what do we have to lose? If I leave those watches at the price that you want, you want to break even. Ninety percent chance that when I go to sell these, there's going to be trades that are going to come in. I can't absorb that type of margin in this watch for trades. No, no, it's I get it. Very okay. difficult. For me. Let's just forget the diamond one for one second. Yeah. The the two Daytonas, like I get it. Like the the Oyster Flex, I'm fine with. Fine. But the white gold one, I get it. Like I get it. It's not the hottest piece, but you still can't get it for retail. But why don't we do a deal for the two Daytonas? Now indeed, this one we put on consignment and see what we can get. No, no, no. For, so for the Daytonas, the deal of the deal oh, would no. be. The, the, the deal on the Daytonas would be if we purchase them, mm -hmm. thirty five, mm -hmm. and. 40 at the max. So 75. For 75. Still for making money at 75. I'm like, as I'm I say, like you know what I say behind enemy lines? I'm right there. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm in, on the front. That's why I, I see all this stuff. this over the phone with you guys. That's why I brought them because I don't want to deal with this over the phone because I know it's just, I just come and I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay, so if tomorrow I call, I call him and I tell him, look, I have an offer on the table of 120. He can make we a can decision that. We, we can try. We can try. You can leave with us and that way you'll know for sure. No, no, no. If we can sell it or not. The rainbow, no the rainbow you, we do consignment, that's not a problem at all. I'm just trying to think for the Daytonas, like if I just, you know, sell it to you guys at that price and you guys can sell it. If you want to get 80 out of them, leave them here. We'll get it out for you.
A lot of you guys uh, have asked me what's going on with my son Marcus and his sneaker enterprise. Well, let me flash back to where he was about a year ago. All right, so on our left right here, we got most of the big bulk stuff, a lot of stuff that's like 100 plus quantity. It's been a lot of wholesale recently, to be honest with you, but I sell the stuff on uh, mostly StockX and GOAT. At the moment, three people working for me, so hopefully they can hold down the fort um, while I'm in college and you know do the physical work and I'll be you know doing computer work. What are you guys doing now? Uh, we just uh, finished, just finished adding all the inventory together. All of it? Yeah, figuring out who's inventory who's. We're about to start launching the website, so I know you, you told me to get it's on smarter, that. It's the smartest thing to do. Makes we sense. Week. We also have to we have to get a bunch of because a lot of stuff we bought here is for the store. So we gotta what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the store inventory to a separate. Uh, the inventory system on Shopify, and then start slowly listing that on the website, basically. And then you grab a pair of these and you step out like a champ. <laughs> what the fuck are these? Yo, oh, my shit. What is this? <laughs> Yo, Alex! Yo, Yo what? Is I got you, too. I got you, bro. Margarita yeah. 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 I got you, bro. Do you, Do you have like the rendering of the store? Yeah. So where are the shoes? So this is the middle right here. <laughs> this is the middle right here. This is It's going to be like a Japanese Zen garden type thing. Oh, that's and then, so in the middle of these rocks, those are like the rare exclusive pairs that are going to be there. Mm -hmm. And you can't walk through those. There's like, see those three little uh, circles? That's where you walk. You can walk across or you can walk around. So you look from the outside in. So on the three circles is right here. So if you want to walk across, you can walk across or you can walk you around. You can actually step up on this thing or this is on the floor? Huh? This is up, right? This part. No, it's on the floor. This is on the floor? Yeah. It's going to be like a garden. You know, we'll rake it every morning. Nice, nice and... <laughs> That's not going to be actual sand, is it? No, it is. You're insane. It's gonna look sick. No, no, you can't go on there. That's what I'm saying. So it's not gonna be like hard to maintain. Oh, I see. Yeah, how it, yeah. Oh, yeah. now I see. Yeah. I thought it was the floor. No, no. Look. No, so this I... is this is this is gonna be like a nice like it's not real marble, but you know marble looking type uh, bench. So the shoes are gonna be all on. They're gonna individual... be like hanging. No, no. So these, there's these machines that we bought. They levitate each shoe. You put a magnet inside of it, and oh, magnet inside so. the machine, yeah. and it just spins. And then we're gonna put a hundred of those things in there. How much is each one of those? It's expensive. That's the majority of the build-out. But we can. The, the, the good thing is, is when we want to, the shoes open. are going to levitate. Now I know this is going to be a temp space, right? Uh, but most of the stuff that we're so spending money on is, is, is you, pick it up you can take it and move it. Is my point. I would imagine you wouldn't win the sand, probably. No, no, <laughs> we could throw that out. But no, see the shelving too. It's pretty simple. Uh, minimalistic. Are you, are you going to have somebody out out there doing the whole sand thing? Yeah, every morning. It's the aerial view, and then. But in reality, how many shoes are you fitting? Uh, 100 to 120 is our different skews. Why do I feel like, uh, where's the checkout? There's no checkout. We're, we're walk around with an iPad. We're like Apple, man. You get the iPad. Oh, no, sir, can I help you? Whatever, whatever you want, well, you try it on, you like then, it. Then, then let me ask make you a dumb question. Why are you not utilizing Come on, bro, this I trust wall? you. What would you put on that wall? What would I put on that wall? I would put a, a case with more shoes that you can showcase. Maybe your special shoes. Well, I mean, we're going to have, so if you see, this isn't rendered completely, but back here, this is going to be actually raised, this part. And we're going to have a little showcase, like with uh, accessory hats, potentially jewelry that we might do. But I still feel like, the, I like the clean, there's, okay, so minimal there, look. But I There's not like as much room as it seems on this render back there, but I, I agree with you. If you go back here, right here, it, and this this is cut off as well, so there's actually more room this way because it's 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 curved. That's why it's not in the render, but right. it's more like this. It would, if you put that in half, yeah, that's more, where the window the door. Yeah, there's more room. Then we're gonna we're gonna probably put more shelves either for shoes or for clothes. I feel like you should put there. You can have more clothes because because when you walk into the store, as you walk into okay, as, as I'm walking into the store, here's the door, and then it kind of goes off this way, right? Right. So I I would <coughs> utilize that corner for maybe like a, a semi round. Closing. Yeah, I think that would the back wall that would I don't think I think that's too much because we have we have so much going on on the wall in the middle and I think the back is just gonna kinda be like a that place where you take a picture of like you just limit yourself to 120 different pairs of shoes. Is that what you did? Yeah. What happens when you have 300 different pairs? We're not gonna have 300 pairs. That store is twelve hundred fifty square feet. We're not gonna have three hundred pairs of shoes with five to ten pairs of each. That would be fifteen hundred to three thousand pairs each. How much are you holding now? Well, we don't have, we're not holding anything right now. Our goal is probably 500 to 1,000 pieces with clothes and shoes. For example, we have 300 pairs of weight runners, of which we're going to probably put in the store 15 or 20. So 
Like I said, so this we're is talking skews versus. Skews, that's why I said skews, not pairs. Can I ask you an important question? Why the hell is there no water in this building? That's a good question. Uh, I think we ran out because all the employees like to drink three sips of water, put it down, and then grab a new one. That's kind of like what happens around here. I do the you same know, thing. You know, what, you know what I do about Drew Brown when they do that? What? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so when I just looked at the watch in the picture, I instantly saw mm -hmm. the left one was fake. Yep. Because of the dial font. Dial font. The, 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 with, uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Cosmograph font, it's too bold. The subdials are are too light. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Does the warranty card have the hologram in it? So if you take a black light on the yeah. top left side of the card. No, I mean I, I got the watch. I I noticed I noticed it right away. I mean. Other side, on the green. No hologram. No. On the top, on the green. Nope. So the card's fake too. Yeah. I bought last year a total of seventeen hundred watches last year in total and two of them have come back fake. Two out of 1,700 was fake. One was a brigade, believe it or not. It was a ladies' brigade that was just like one for one. And we got in this Panda Daytona, and at first glance, I was writing it up. And then I noticed, I'm like, wait, something's off about this card. Yeah, I know, I know, I, know. I, I pointed out right away. It was just very interesting. It was just, at first sight, it was like really, really good. The engraving on the inside. Yeah, the, the engraving on the inside is pretty close. Like, real yeah. close. It's, it's, it's simply the, the biggest tells for me on the dial font. Dial and font, yeah. The, the way the clasp, um, with the way the, the latch there closes, it's not going to be as, as clickable yep. as a close. Yep. The other one is going to be more of a, of a close. Yeah, yeah. This, this, is, this is flimsier, you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you, can, you can even hear it. It's crazy. But, yeah. <laughs> man, that's scary. There's a paper chair on everything. The guy's, the guy's uh, you know, he's... He's, he's a good client of ours. He, he was he was just like gutted. Still think he was trying to deceive. No 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 no. He he was he got he got. He got deceived himself. He got deceived. Yeah yeah. It's a good it's a good fake. It's a really really good fake. If somebody was wearing this ten feet away, I don't think anybody would be able to tell unless it's up close. So it's interesting. Got to be really careful out there, especially nowadays. I mean the fakes are like damn near one for one. 9.9 .9 times out of ten, I can spot it instantly. This one really took some careful um, inspection. You can even notice like in the, the color, very, very, very subtle, but the color of these subdials is not one for one with the bezel, whereas this one is just like, boom, black, black, yeah, real black, bold. jet black, you know? So anyway, never an ordinary moment here at Luxury Bazaar, that's for sure. So contrary to popular belief, last year, I purchased a total of 1,346 watches from the public. So thank you guys. And we've only come across two fakes in that whole entire process. So when we buy a watch from the client, we ensure that the client fills out a purchase agreement with their ID describing the watch in total. And once we get it in and inspect it, we send the client a wire. In this case, a watch came in that I almost overlooked. It was a Panda Daytona that was a really, really, really good fake. But at second glance, I noticed a few things were off about it. So this is one of the most important things about our business is the intake process. And in this case, this watch was a fake and the client who actually sent it to us was a good client of ours. He got tricked, so he wasn't out there to try to scam us. He just simply didn't know himself. And there was a few things I pointed out in the watch that made it fake. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, I appreciate your support throughout the years. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next week on Gray Market.